Hi, I'm John McCartney, Head of Packaging Transformation at X-Rite Pantone. I'd like to take a moment to show you how Exact 2 can work with ColorSerp. Here I have my handheld, a color basic sheet, and on the computer, I'm running ColorSerp QA tools with our new user interface available in ColorSerp versions 5.0 and above. I have four orange samples that I'd just like to show how we can easily create a standard and measure against. Here, I can see that I'm in tether mode on QA tools. This is wireless over Wi-Fi communicating with the computer. If I simply come here and I'm going to measure in my reference, Color search is going to search through its database to look to see if there's a standard in the system already. It doesn't find one, so it asks me if I want to create a new one. Here we go. I have my color cert set up, so when I create a new standard, I take three measurements to average them out. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. So I have my three measurements. I can see my LAB. Come over here to details. Let's give it a name. I'll call it color basics orange. This is also where I would set up any standards that I want. I'm going to go ahead and do that and say it's D50, two degrees, with a delta T tolerance of two for delta T 2000. So there's my color. If I wanted to assign it to a particular customer or to a substrate, I could. So let's go ahead and select that. Here my visual color, I can see that that's my target color. Now if I take a measurement, let's say on a slightly different orange, we can see it searched the, through the database. It identified that this color is slightly different from the orange that we just created. Ask me if I want to create a new standard. In this case, I don't. So now that I've done that, I simply need to pick the standard that I was attempting to measure. In this case, it's that color basics orange that we just created. The delta T is 2.03. Let's say I know that I want to stick to this standard. I have multiple different oranges that I'm going to measure, different samples. I can click on this button that says lock to the standard. And then it doesn't matter if I measure an orange or a green or purple, it's always going to measure against the standard. So here, I set the tolerance at delta T of 2. We're at 2.03, so I have a red X on my color cert. What's great is that in tether mode, I also see that on my device. So I can see my target color, my actual color, and then I know if I'm in or if I'm out. In this case, I'm slightly out. Let's go back and measure the, the reference again. This one should be in. We can see here. It's green, it's good, the delta T is 0 0.12. So I can see that right on my device without actually going back to the computer. Next, if I want to see more of the options, more of the menus, I can click here to cycle through the widgets on Color QA tools. There's my reflectance curve. This would be my density, LAB plot, Density information, which I haven't measured yet. My LIBCH. This would be best match. And back to my original screen that we looked at at first. Let's go ahead and take some other measurements to start populating this with data. Here we find one that has a delta of 2.7. And I can see the difference in the color in the bottom right. It looks a little bit browner. If I go back to color cert, I can see a recommendation here with my LAB plot, where I'm at, where I want to be. Best match is a really useful tool that can show you what color you're at right now, the color that you want to be at, and by adjusting your ink film thickness or density, how to get there. In order to power best match, I need to have my sample, my standard, and I need to measure my substrate 
so the system knows what's ink and what's substrate. So let's go ahead and do that. In color cert, I can click measure substrate. Now I have a prompt on my device that tells me to take a measurement of the substrate. So let's find a spot without any ink on it. Here we go. Now that I have the measurement of the substrate into color cert, I can see this best match graph. Best match tells me what my current density and delta is. It also tells me how good or bad um, I can get that density and delta to. In this example, my density is at 121. My delta is at 2.69. I can improve that slightly to 2.67. But this red triangle tells me that no matter how much adjustment of ink film thickness or density, I'll never be able to hit my uh, target delta E. So likely I need to change my ink. Let's try a different sample. In this orange, my delta is 1.18, so I'm within tolerance. But let's see what best match says. Best match says delta is at 1.18, but I could improve it slightly to 1.04 by bumping up my density from 1.15 to 1.17. Over here, I'm seeing the same thing, but with a graph. The black line, black dotted line, is where I'm at. The green dotted line is the best that I could be. And this curve right here shows me the range of delta E's at different densities. The lower the density, I'm in tolerance until I get to such a point that the density is too low, and I start falling out of tolerance. Same goes for adding on too much density. At some point, it becomes too much, and I start to fall out of my tolerance again. Let's take one more measurement. Here in this sample, my delta is slightly higher, 1.92, but I'm still within tolerance. You notice here that my black line has moved out to the left a little bit, meaning that my delta is slightly higher. It's just under this red line, a delta of two, but I'm still within tolerance. But as I'm taking measurements, if I start to see drifting down, perhaps I could bump up my density or my ink film thickness to bring me back into the center. So that's ColorCert QA tools with the exact two running in tether mode. Thank you.